Hi everyone, it's Sean from What Up. Welcome back to another video. And today we're talking Wheel of Time Season 3. The WGA website posted all of the episode titles for Season 3 just a couple of days ago. And while they're not in order, they do give us a very good idea of what's going to happen during the season. Now, every single one of those episode titles does correspond to a chapter in the book. So we're going to talk about the chapter of the book. So I'll give a quick synopsis of what every single episode title means as far as the books go. And then I'm going to try to piece them together in order so we know which ones correspond to where in the season. And then we're going to speculate what that story is based on not just this new information, but all the previous leaks and info we've gotten. And I think we're going to get very close to a very general outline for Season 3 in today's video. So if you know nothing about Season 3 of The Wheel of Time, this is probably the video you want to watch because I'm going to try to figure out exactly what we're going to see for it, even though it's over a year away at this point. Now, if you're new to the channel, you don't know what we do here. We cover Wheel of Time show news. So if you like that sort of thing, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And of course, tell a couple of your friends. Um, I'm really bad at advertising the channel and selling myself, but you folks have been doing a fantastic job at that. Uh, so keep it up. Keep telling people about what up. Uh, try to share the channel around a little bit. And uh, I'll do a contest at 25,000 subscribers because we're getting pretty close now. Um, and maybe give away a couple of one-up t-shirts. Uh, you can't buy them, but I do give them away. Um, now, this probably goes without saying, but since we're going to discuss episode titles for Season 3, and then we're going to talk about the chapters and the books, where they come from, and then we're going to try to piece it together in order, and then we're going to speculate on how the season is going to turn out, well, we're going to ruin a ton of different things today. So, spoiler warning, if you have not read the first five books of Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time series, yes, I said five, that's The Eye of the World up through and including The Fires of Heaven, and if you have not watched the first two seasons of the show, streaming right now on Prime Video, before warned, I'm going to ruin plot points and character arcs from both of those mediums, and since we are talking season three, I'm ruining a bunch of stuff from season three, including the episode titles, um, and if I'm right about my synopsis, my conjecture, then I'm going to ruin maybe some of the plot of season three as well, so... Just keep all of that in mind. All right, let's get on to the video. All right, so before we get started, a quick shout out to watchseries.com. I've left a link to a couple of different articles down below in the description box. Please, when you're done the video, click the articles, go over there, read them, maybe leave a comment, uh, share them around as well. Tell your friends and family about uh, watchseries.com uh, because without them, the longing in between seasons, which is about two years at this point, I think, ish, is what we're going to get between seasons. It seems to be sort of a trend. It would be very long indeed because they are the premier source of leaks and news for Wheel of Time. Um, and they've been doing it since day one, and they've never been wrong. So without them, the fandom would be uh, pretty hard-pressed to figure out what's going on in between seasons. So thank you so much to WattSeries.com, and please, folks, please support them in any way you can. Uh, also, quick note, uh, the tables I'm using in today's video, uh, I don't generally use a ton of graphics in my video. It's been mentioned uh, in a couple of comments that I should use more, make these videos a little bit more flashy. It's just not really what I do. I know I'd probably get more views if they looked a little bit more slick, but uh, I, I like to talk. And uh, I like to keep things simple here. Uh, these tables, anyway, are from one of those articles. So full credit goes out to watchseries.com for these tables. And thank you so much for putting together such a clear and concise article. All right. Uh, so first, we're going to talk about the writers. Now, the writers for Season 3, there's not a whole lot of big surprises here. We knew most of the writers already through different press releases, uh, leaks, as well as social media posts. However, there is one thing I want to mention before we move on to the episode titles. And that is that Rave Judkins does not have a credit on the finale. Now, in Season 1 and in Season 2, he had a writer's credit in the finale, so he was at least part of the creative process in writing those episodes. He does not have that for Season 3. Um, I'm not sure why that is, but it is something to note because it is a change from what they were doing for the first two seasons. I don't know if maybe we're going to see something a little bit different at the end of Season 3. Who knows? Um, so there's that. Anyway, all right, let's get on to the episode titles. So these are the episode titles that were released on the WJ website. Now, said at the beginning of the video... It's possible that these are not 100% correct, and I'll tell you why. And that's because as these episode titles were basically, I don't want to say leaked, WJ just kind of released them, which is normal for them. Um, we were talking about them as a fandom. WattSeries.com did a post on a couple of different episode titles we've already known about. And Sarah Nakamura, the book consultant for the show, uh, went ahead and made a few posts on social media clarifying the fact that these may be placeholders. So it is very common practice in the industry to assign a placeholder, placeholder title to an episode and then give it to the WGA for, for um, just any type of purpose. Like they don't have one specifically nailed down yet. Um, however, I will say that I think at this point, everything we've seen that's been leaked as far as episode titles go for both season one and season two has been 100% correct the entire way through. 
So while Sarah is talking about placeholders, I don't know if that's her hedging her bets and the fact that they may change them between now and release, uh, or the fact that this does give away a little bit more than anticipated. Uh, and it really does, as you'll see by the end of today's video, uh, when we start walking through what each of these chapters mean, um, and they're trying to kind of give us sort of a, a smoke bomb, like distraction noodle, look over here type thing. I don't know. Either way, that was a post by Sarah. So we'll take these with a grain of salt because they may change between now and final airing. But I'm going to, I don't know, if I had to bet money on it, I'd say they wouldn't because they haven't yet. Uh, all right, so we have uh, To Race the Shadow, Golden Eyes, A Question of Crimson, He Who Comes with the Dawn, Seeds of Shadow, Teleran Rioid, The Road to the Spear, and The Shadow in the Night. Now, every single one of these episode titles is a chapter in one of the books, either in The Dragon Reborn, The Shadow Rising, The Great Hunt, or Fires of Heaven. I love those two to the very outliers because we kind of expected some stuff from The Dragon Reborn and totally expected The Shadow Rising, books three and four, to be here. But I don't think many of us expected anything from book two or book five, but there is. These are all chapter titles from those books. So we're going to walk through each one of these uh, titles, where they came from, and I'm going to put them in order and try to give you an outline of what I think is going to happen for the story for each one of these episodes. All right, so there are a few different storylines that we know of for season three that are happening for sure. The first is the waste. We know that Rand, Lan, Moraine, and Egwene all go to the waste. That's pretty much a given. We've seen set photos. We've seen uh, indications of those particular cast members in and around scenes from the waste. So we know they're going to the waste. That is happening. The second thing is Tenchiko. We know that Matt, Tom, Min, Nynaeve, and Elaine are all in Tenchiko. Uh, and this is from leaks that I've released here on my channel. We know that that happens. Um, the third plot line that we are fully aware of is Perrin going back to the Two Rivers. This isn't a huge shock because Rave Dodkins had mentioned a number of different times that the Shadow Rising is something he wants to adapt uh, mostly during Season 3, especially the Battle of the Two Rivers. So we know that's, that storyline is happening. We also knew, know, thanks to leaks from WantSeries.com as well as leaks from Hear Me, uh, myself here on the channel as well, uh, that we're getting some scenes in Camelin and we're getting some scenes in the Tower. Uh, and we're also probably getting the Tower Coup this season due to some leaked set photos that we've seen from Narg the Daily Trolloc, um, with waters that are covered in blood, blood all over the tower walls, things of that nature. So we have those storylines that we kind of kind of cram into these episodes somehow. It's a lot. There is a ton happening in the next season, including introducing a ton of new characters. Um, and my favorite character, Gowan, he shows up next season too. Uh, we're not sure who plays him yet, but we have some conjecture out there and some other videos I have. Um, so. Let's try to figure out how this all goes together. So the very first episode title, and this is for sure of this, because it was released by the Wheel of Time, is To Race the Shadow. This comes to us from The Dragon Reborn, the third book in the series, chapter 47. Uh, in the book series, this is when Matt goes to Andor. He goes to meet Queen Morghese with a letter from Elaine, her daughter, um, basically stating she's been raised to be accepted. Things are going well. Don't worry about her. She's meeting new friends, all of these other things. And Morghese is very upset with her daughter and the White Tower at this point because she hasn't had much information on Elaine and she know this, knows that Elaine has left the tower and is kind of gallivanting around. Um, while Matt's in the palace, he overhears someone talking about killing Elaine as well as the other girls. When he meets Queen Morghese, he realizes that this person is Lord Gabriel, Queen Morghese's lover. So he kind of, you know, bluffs his way through the meeting, lies a little bit about who he is, where he's from, um, enough to fool the queen. Lord Gabriel wants to put him to question. Um, the queen says no, thanks him for the letter. Lord Gabriel gives him a big sack of money, and then he's sent on his way. He goes back to the inn in Camelin, talks to Tom, who's at the inn, and says, we have to go warn them. There's a plot to kill Elaine. They're in Tyr. We're going to Tyr. And Tom says, well, the only worse, place worse for him than Camelin would be Tyr or Tyre Valon, so he's going with... Uh, with Matt. So he he tags along with Matt. So that's what happens in that chapter. What happens in the show is probably not that. <laughs> but I think it'll be similar. So here's the thing. We know that between season one and season two there was a time jump, a fairly big time jump. I think we're gonna see the same thing between seasons two and season three. I think you're gonna see that uh some of the people like uh Nynaeve, Elaine, um They've probably gone back to the tower with Min and Matt as well. Uh, so they're probably going to start out the season in the tower, perhaps. Maybe in, they're going to stay in Fallen, but I think they're going to probably start out the season in the tower. Um, and Rand is probably going to be with Moraine, Lan, and Egwene. 
Um, and then Perrin, I think, is going to go off and do his own thing because he's heard rumors about the Two Rivers and he's going to kind of take off in this episode. I think all those things are happening. So I think while Matt is in the tower, uh, perhaps getting healed from the dagger again, I don't know if they're going to even pursue that plot line. I don't know if they're going to bother. He still has the dagger. It's kind of attached to that sticky, the bedpost he took at the end of season two. Um, I'm pretty sure that's not his uh, Ashendari. I don't think that's the weapon he uses in the series. Um, even though Brandon Sanderson kind of made fun of it a bit when he was on stream with Matt Hatch, uh, he he wasn't aware that uh, of most of the rest of the season when he made those comments. So I don't think that's the case. Maybe Matt gets healed, maybe not. But I think at this point, they're probably going to overhear some things in the tower or notice that some people in the tower are gone. They know that Leandrin is Black Asia, and she's she's basically gone on her way. Uh, they know that there are other Black Asia as well. So I think that we're going to see Nynaeve and Min um, and Elaine go to chase them. And they're probably going to send Matt to um, Andor to tell the Queen not to worry about it while they're gone. Um, if they keep in the the full full reign of this matt's going to overhear all this and then he's going to go to tanchico to chase them to make sure that they're safe because there's a plot against them i think we're going to see some of that in this episode they may cut all of that out and they may just decide they're not going to the letter thing they're not going to go to camelin uh they're just all going to travel to tanchico and not even go back to the tower that's also a distinct possibility i'm not entirely sure but i think that either way in this episode they're going to travel to or end up in tanchico uh, and I think the bulk of the episode will be surrounding uh, those folks. All right, so the next episode that I think comes in line. Now, this one we don't know for sure. This is my conjecture that is coming in in, in number two. It's going to be Teleran Ruoid. I think we're going to see this as episode two. Now, in the book series, this comes from the Dragon Reborn, chapter 27. Uh, and it's uh, Gwen as well as uh, Elaine and Naive. They're back in the tower. And they have Dream Tear Angriel. And Elaine, or sorry, Gwen uses it. To step into the dream while she's in the dream she focuses on need what can they do to help rand what can they do to capture the black aja what can they do what, what what's what's going to help rand the most at this point and she ends up in uh the stone of tear where calendar is the sword that is not a sword um which is kind of a weird thing for the book series it was so big and important and then it just wasn't for a very long time and then it came back later on it's a, it's a whole thing. I'll have to do a whole, whole video about that. Um, but while she's there, she meets a woman named Sylvie. You know, Sylvie basically describes what the sword is, how it works, uh, explains that it's important to the Dragon Reborn, and then ushers Egwene out of, out of there really quick before uh, someone else who is coming down to look at Kalindor uh, catches her. Um, now, it's heavily implied in the book series. It doesn't come right out to say it, but it's heavily implied that Sylvie is Lanfear, so likely that is the case. How does this relate to the show? Well, I think we're going to see Egwene start to tinker with the idea of dreaming, just on her own. I don't think there's going to be a Terry and Grail involved, or if there is, it'll be something that Maureen probably just gives her, or Varen gives her. It just ends up being in her possession. Um, and I think she's going to meet the Wise Ones, rather than going into uh, Kalidor and uh, the Stony Tear. I, th I think they're cutting Tear out completely in Season 2. I don't think we're going there at all. I think she's going to meet the wise ones in the dream and realize she has to go to the waste and that Rand also has to go to the waste. Now, in the book series, Rand discovers he has to go to the waste by going through uh, uh, one of those door frames. There's two different types of door frames, one where you can answer questions and one where you can ask for sort of like three different boons from the elfin and the elfin. Um, I don't think Rand's going to do that. I think Egwene is going to be the, the deciding factor of pushing them to go back to the waste. At the end, it will probably help with that. I think in this uh, particular episode, we're going to see Rand, Lan, Moraine, Egwene, and Avienda travel to the Waste based on Egwene's dreaming. It's just my take on it. Remember, this is all conjecture. I think it's a grain of salt, but I think that's what's going to happen in this particular episode. All right, so the next episode I think is, is going to be in line for Season 3 is Seeds of Shadow. And this comes from the Shadow Rising Chapter 1. So this is the fourth book in the series, Chapter 1. In this particular chapter, Min arrives in Tarvalon, uh, and she goes to see the Amarillan with a letter from Moraine. Um, Swan is still the Amarillan at this point. Um, however, as Min is walking through the tower, she sees a ton of indications that the tower is going to be attacked. This ends up being the Tower Coup later on in the book series. Um, later on in that book, rather. Uh, she meets Galad and Gowan for the first time, uh, and she is in the tower at this point. 
do I think that Min will be in the tower this far along? Um, it's possible. I think maybe, possibly, we might still see Min, um, Nynaeve, and Elaine in the tower up to the fourth episode. It's entirely possible, along with Matt. Um, and that's when they head off to Tenchiko after Min sees all these things that are happening. And then Matt goes to Camelin, and then they kind of meet back up at Tenchiko. Although I think that it probably is more likely that they'll leave in the first episode. Either way, this particular episode in the series is probably not going to have Min seeing um, visions of a tower coup. I don't think. I think it's going to focus more heavily on Lyda, her coming to the tower. We're going to start to see uh, cracks in all of the things that the Aes Sedai did and a lot of Swan's plans. Lyda will be plotting against her. And I think we're actually going to see the tower coup starting or finishing in this particular episode. I think it would be a good mid-season finale, so probably episode four to finish up the tower coup and have Swan deposed or killed. Um, but it might happen in this episode as well. All right, so the next episode title I think comes in line is The Shadow of the Night. This is a tough one to place in the in the series for season three because it's it's something that really has nothing to do with storylines that I think they're going to progress in this particular season. Um, so it's probably a hint of something like some of the other episode titles were for season one and season two. So The Shadow of the Night comes from The Great Hunt, which is book two, chapter 27. Um, in this, uh, Loyal and Rand uh, meet with Tom in Kyrian. So this happens... Long before the events of Fall, um, Thomas and Kyrene, they meet with him. Uh, they're talking with him. They go back towards their inn. And as they go back towards their inn uh, to speak with Huron, their um, thief taker that's there, well, they get attacked by Trollocs. Trollocs that are disguised as puppets, which I kind of thought we would see in the second season, but we didn't see that at all. Um, and during the fight, they meet Aludra, who is an illuminator. Uh, they're people who make fireworks. She's incredibly important to the story much later on in the book series. Um, and she shows up here and there in little tidbits throughout the series. Uh, and she is, believe it or not, a fan favorite. A lot of people really, really super love that her as a character. Um, this particular storyline, where it's at in the books, makes, in my mind, absolutely zero sense for the show. The only thing that I can think of is after the fight and Rand and Loyal get back to the inn, the innkeeper has a letter from Landfear uh, that she, they give to Rand, and Rand opens it up, and it says that uh, that he's a dangerous man and that he'll always be hers. I think we're going to see in this particular episode probably a little bit more of Landfear. We might see some interactions between Landfear and the other Chosen. Remember, we're going to see Mulgedian in this particular season. I haven't mentioned her at all yet. We're also seeing one other male Forsaken. So Gabriel, that we talked about, Lord Gabriel. Um, he is Robin. We're going to see Robin in this particular season. It's possible, but I think it's more likely Samuel's one we'll see. I'm not 100% on this. I think this particular episode will factor in a little more heavily on the shadow side of it. We'll see more of the, um, more of Lanfear, maybe Mulchetti, and maybe Robin or Samuel. Um, remember, Ishi's gone. He's not coming back, I don't think, at this point. Um, and we'll probably tie up the storylines that started in To Race the Shadow, Talaran Ryoid, and Seeds of Shadow. So we may see the Tower Coup. We may see them finally getting to the Waste. So Rand, um, Rand and company getting to the Waste. We may see people finally showing up in Tanchico. Uh, maybe um, Matt's on his way there to Tanchico as well. I think this will be kind of a wrap-up episode where they wrap everything up for the first four episodes of the series of the season. All right, so the next episode... I think is going to happen in the series will be uh, the road to the sphere. I think this will be episode five in season three. Now, this is something that a lot of people have been really waiting for um, since the show was announced. And I'm one of the people that's included in this. So this comes from the uh, Shadow Rising, which is book four, chapter 25. And this is where Rand enters Roydian. So he enters the ancient city in the Waste. He goes through the glass columns and he sees through the eyes of his ancestors. So we get to see the whole history of the Aiel from inception pretty much to present day through the eyes of Rand's ancestors. Uh, we also get to learn about Rand's true parentage, uh, that Tam wasn't his father, how he was born on the slopes of Dragon Mount. They tell the whole story at this point. Um, and it's going to be one of those episodes, I think, where... The writing is going to shine a whole lot, or it's, it's going to have to shine a whole lot. 
Um, do you remember the Egwene uh, episode in season two? We don't have to say much more than that. Everybody knows what I'm talking about when I say that. I think this might be something of that nature because there's a lot of emotions attached to what he sees in the past. Um, and I can't wait to see something like that happen on screen. How are they going to do it in the show? So I think they're pretty much going to follow what happens in the book chapter. I think this is where Rand and company actually enter the waste finally. They meet uh, the clan chiefs. They meet the wise ones. Egwene probably takes some time learning about dreaming. Um, Rand probably takes almost zero time and books it down to Roydian. Matt, unfortunately, is not with him. I think Matt is in Tanchico at this point in the storyline. Um, and then we're going to see a lot of flashbacks to the Aiel's Inception, the Age of Legends. We know we're going to see this stuff because uh, we already have seen leaked photos of Aiel as well as black, uh, more modern-looking, sleek-type carriages and some other things coming out of the sets. Uh, so I think we're definitely going to see some flashbacks from way back when. We also have some characters that have been cast, uh, leaked castings, rather, of... Uh, the same name as uh, some of uh, Rand's ancestors and people in his visions. So I think this is pretty much going to follow that, and I'm hoping they dedicate the entire episode to it. I think all of this episode should just be the flashbacks and learning about the past. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get that. I think I'll be wrong on that, but I'm hoping for that. All right, so the next episode I think we're going to see for Season 3 is A Question of Crimson. Now, Question of Crimson comes from The Fires of Heaven. That's Book 5, Chapter 33. In this particular book... Um, Tenchiko's done with, that's finished, that's that's old news. Uh, Nynaeve and Elaine are with Tom and Julian Sander, who is not in the show as far as we know, and they're traveling with Val and Luca's traveling menagerie. Now, Val and Luca is a showman. So think of this as a big circus. They have all kinds of different animals and different acts and things like that. Uh, Elaine does a tightrope walking act at one point in the books in this particular, um, uh, when she's with Val and Luca's show. Um, and the scene that we're referencing here for Question of Crimson is Nynaeve wearing a particular dress that she is embarrassed to wear because it shows a little bit too much. And she is uh, attached to a wheel and Tom's chucking knives at her. <laughs> so that's what this particular chapter is about. Do I think we're going to get that in the show? No, I don't think so. Uh, I, for one, really want to see Val and Luca. I want to see the traveling menagerie. I want to see all of that stuff. And in fact, I want... Bruce Campbell to play Val and Luca. There is no one else in my mind that could even come close to pulling off that character. It should be Bruce. Um, but I don't think we're going to see all that. I think the question of Crimson has more to do with the idea that they're in Tanchico. They're probably on the run at this point. They're, they've had their showdown with Uh They're they're dealing with some other things and they're looking for a place to hide out. And maybe either they hide in the Traveling Menagerie for a short period of time while it's still in and around Tanchico, or or uh, it is entirely possible that uh, it's just an Easter egg in the background, and that's why it's the title of the episode. Uh, Nynaeve gets addressed as an Easter egg or, or things of that nature. Remember, a lot of these episode titles don't really coincide with the story that they're telling, um, but they do in small bits, either as an Easter egg or a little throwback to, to a small bit in the episode. So it's possible this could be the focus of the episode, but I really don't think it's going to be. I think there are plenty of more important things. As much as I like the traveling menagerie, there are plenty more important things they can spend their time on for season three rather than, than uh, that particular plot line. All right, we get two left. Episode seven. This is one of the ones that was leaked. We kind of already know that this particular episode is going to be uh, episode seven of the show. Um, that's Golden Eyes. This comes from The Shadow Rising, uh, book four in The Wheel of Time, chapter 56. This is basically after the fact and... Perrin kind of reintegrated with everybody in the Two Rivers. He's already seen all of his, his uh, friends and, and the townsfolk. He's kind of rallied them all together, um, and the Trollocs are going to attack. They're amassing in great numbers. He does not expect the town to survive, so he sends Fael on a fool's errand, so to speak, to get some help. Basically, he's sending her out of harm's way so she can, she can live. Um, one of the things I don't think I've mentioned so far is how they meet. It doesn't seem to fit anywhere, but we'll cover that up in the loose ends at the end of the video. Um, and then the Trollocs attack. Perrin and the townsfolk repel the Trollocs for a bit. Um, uh, the men are all fighting, and then the women join them, just like uh, in the Song of Manethrin. Um, And the White Cloaks that are there to capture Perrin and bring him to trial for killing uh, other White Cloaks kind of stand by and do nothing. And then 
Fael shows up and saves the day with a bunch of people from uh, Watch Hill. They come at the back of the Trollocs, and the battle is won. Perrin then does not give himself up to the White Cloaks, gets very angry uh, that they didn't help out and fight, even though other people that aren't fighters did, and sends them on their way. So that's what happens in the books. In the show, so we really haven't mentioned a whole lot about Perrin in all of this season when I've talked about different things, and that isn't to say I don't think he's in some of these episodes. I think he totally is. I think you'll see his journey to uh, the Two Rivers. I think you'll see him meeting Fael at some point or another along the way and her tagging along as a hunter of the horn. Uh, I think you'll see some of her backstory. I think you'll see a number of different things with Fael and Perrin. Um, will we get goal? I, I don't know. I don't know if he's going to show up in this season or not. There's been no indication of it, but he's a fan favorite. We're kind of hoping he does. Um, we know that Bane and Chiad have been spotted on set in the Two Rivers, along with uh, the actress who plays Fael, as well as uh, Marcus Rutherford, who plays Perrin. Um, so we know Bane and Chiad are there, but I haven't seen anything about goal yet. So... Here's the thing. I think he's going to be interspersed throughout the entire season, sort of like he was in season two. I don't think he's going to be a focal point. I don't think they're going to give uh, Perrin a big bunch of uh, screen time until this episode. I think this episode is going to focus mainly on Perrin, mainly on the two rivers. We'll see other stuff up to this point, of course, but I think the main focus of Perrin will be this particular episode. The big battle will be the kind of uh, end of episode seven for Perrin um and we've already seen leaked photos in in video footage from uh Lauren over at Unraveling the Pattern as well as a few other content creators that actually got to go to see the two of her sets last fall and they were not told they couldn't share it so they shared the stuff there's palisades there's towers there's all kinds of stuff we know they filmed the battle of the two rivers that's that's pretty much a given at this point I think this episode will pretty much focus on that we may see some other little tidbits tied up but it'll be mainly a Perrin episode in my opinion all right, and the finale for season three, I think, is going to be He Who Comes with the Dawn. Uh, this is the episode title that prompted Sarah Nakamura to say there could be placeholders. They may change. Um, I think it's because it gives a lot away. Uh, so in the book series, this is from The Shadow Rising, book four, chapter 34. Uh, this is where Rand comes back from Roydian. He comes back and he displays the two dragons on his arms, proclaiming him Karakarn, or Chief of Chiefs, of the Aeel. Um, we learn a little bit more about his parentage, a little bit more about the backstory of Rand, and then they decide to go to Alcardal, the Golden Bowl, uh, to announce to all the other clan chiefs and the wise ones that Rand is the Karakarn. Um, that's, that's the long and short of that particular, um, that particular chapter in the books. How do they handle it in the show? Well, I think... What's going to happen here is I think that Rand is, is going to come back. He's going to display his dragons. But I think that rather than sort of building up the big fight uh, between him and Kool-Aidin, uh for season four, I think it's going to happen in this particular episode. I think Kool-Aidin is going to be upset. I think Kool-Aidin is also going to display his dragons. And I think right there and then they're going to have this big battle because they're not going to end the season not having a battle. And I think the battle will be... Um, between the, the Shaiudu and the other Aiel, uh, and I think Kulidin will be the main uh, focus of that battle between him and Rand. I think it's going to be very, very different from the books, uh, with the same end result, of course. Kulidin, um doesn't make it, uh, but I think, I think this is what's going to happen here in this particular episode. I think we're going to see that as the finale, and they may also prolong the fight in the Two Rivers and have that as part of the finale as well. So I talked about having Golden Eyes be a parent-centric episode and wrapping up his story nice and neat and then moving on to Rand, they may cut back and forth too. We may see spots of the Battle of the Two Rivers as well as a battle in the Waste. Um, and we may even then see different things. Maybe we'll see Nynaeve and Moggy's fight. I think it would be cool to have all three of them happening at the same time in the finale. Either way. So that's that's all the new information we have. So that's the episode titles. That's where they came from the books. That's what I think is going to happen in each of the episodes for season three. I wanted to do a video like this for a long time. And this gave me the perfect excuse knowing all the episode titles. All right, do I think I'm right? I think I'm partially right. I think I have uh, some things, handle on some things for this episode, for the episodes for season three. Uh, do I think I'm totally right? Absolutely not. <laughs> it was just a whole lot of fun to, to throw out some conjecture and some uh, informed uh, guesses. I guess is the best way to put it. Um, but I want to hear what you folks think. Um, give me your list 
uh, start to finish what the episode titles will be for season three down below in these comments if they're different than mine or tag me in social media right break them out and tag me in social media mm-hmm. um and i also want to know what you think happens in the season do you think that i'm partially right kind of right maybe right totally right and do you have anything different that you think uh, may happen in the season and i also want to know what do you want to see so what may happen and what you want to see will probably be two very very different things because everyone's going to want something different so let me know in the comments down below what you folks want out of season three uh and i mean we still have a little over a year now uh, or longer before season three airs because we're looking at tracking probably early next fall um maybe late summer but probably likely early next fall uh for the season uh, to come out um so we have a long time to kind of figure this stuff out so let me know in the comments down below thank you so very much for sticking with us here to the very end and here's to many more